What is up guys? Welcome back to the Lumsden Motorsports Garage. I'm Wade Lumsden and we are back with some more engine building. So let's get to work. Alrighty, so um, in the last video, we talked about cleaning up pistons, inspecting pistons and stuff like that. Uh, I'm all cleaned up. Uh, you can see I just used um, some brushes to get everything cleaned up. Um, I also used a little bit of a wire brush to get piston faces cleaned up, get carbon off and stuff. Um, and inspected all those and all that happy stuff. We will talk about like orientation and stuff like that when we actually go to install them. So for now, we have clean pistons. Boom. Okay, so one of the next things we got to do, I got a cool box here um, where we went and got ourselves a Summit crankshaft. Um, part of why we got a Summit crankshaft is because it was affordable um, and cost effective. So, <laughs> you know, ball, baller on a budget. Sorry, putting you guys on a stand right now. Um, baller on a budget, right? So, it is a cast crank. We're going to go ahead and pull this thing out. Um, my main goal is to um, be ready to really start putting some stuff together tomorrow because my dad's going to come into town. And hopefully we are going to be able to get some stuff built. Box on the floor. All right. There we go. All right. Crank is out. Oh, yeah. Nice and oily. Butamus. All right, nothing particularly special about this crank. It is literally just the cheap cast crank. Um, looks to be in pretty good shape. Um, when you buy a crank, always inspect it. <laughs> uh, you never know what happened to the box, right? So. Um, inspect it. You're going to be looking at all the journals and everywhere that a bearing is going to ride. I think this thing is looking pretty sweet. Yep, pretty sweet. So, um, one thing we're going to do here, uh, I, I know usually for a race motor you would uh, balance you know, get your crank balanced um, along with your the whole rotating assembly, right? Um, and there's lots of lots of videos out there on YouTube on how to do that and um, to make you know really high revving um, race car motors and motors last longer. And you know, it's it's a good thing to do. It's not a luxury that we have, um, and we built. Uh, lots of motors where we've just you know put stuff together out of the box again this is an assembly uh, <laughs> I kind of said something about it at the end of last video uh, difference between engine builders and engine assemblers at this point in time we're kind of just going through assembly because you know machine time and all that other happy stuff it does not allow for us to uh, get a rotating assembly balanced and stuff so one thing that you should definitely look at when you buy a crank other than making sure there's no damage and pulling things out or even when you get your crank back from the machine shop okay there are a bunch of oil holes okay let me uh let me grab you real quick I keep pushing the wrong button when i do that um bunch of oil holes okay we're talking about these all throughout here 
right? You want to make sure that those are clean. Um, and many, many instances, um, those will still have lots of junk in them. So just take your, your little wire brush um, and go through, go through all of those or a piece of welding wire or something. Just, you know, shove something in there. Right? Shove something in there to make sure it's clean. So, when they machine these, you know, sometimes junk gets down in there and it doesn't necessarily get cleaned out. Um, and if you want to ruin your build as fast as you possibly can, um, that's one way to do it. Because if you already got metal clogging up these holes, then you're not going to be lubing up your bearings, right? So your bearings are not going to get properly lubricated. And you're probably going to spin a bearing or create heat or, you know, create all those those wonderful issues so make sure you run something through your oil passages it's not like a major process or project to do so it's really good to do that at a bare minimum I would expect you to at least take some air and blow them out right like like that's a thing <laughs> So again, this is just really simple. Um, and this is just kind of my preliminary cleaning before I actually um, completely clean this up. And we try to put it inside the block. It's over there behind you guys. So, um, And I just go down the line. do these and definitely do this if you're using something used too right because you never know what metal got stuck in there this one's going to come from this way oh Oil passages clean. Now you're gonna, you can clean all the oil that's on it up with, you know, brake clean in a rag or uh, hot soapy water. Hot soapy water works for pretty much everything. <laughs> so um, you wanna wipe this up and clean it up before we uh, move over to the block and start putting uh, main bearings in All right, so here we are. Here's our block all cleaned up cam bearings looking beautiful um, You can see that uh, the main caps are numbered one two three four Sometimes you'll be lucky and they'll already be in there uh, some machine stop machine shops will actually stamp it in um, But then when you pull a main cap, you'll see that There's an arrow that always points towards the front of the block this way so that's awesome and then you'll see uh, kind of like in the last video when we talked about the cross hatching um, where the rod bearing goes um, the cross hatching here so what we're looking at here before we install main bearings is um, kind of the same same deal over there now I've already uh, gone over this block. The machine shop did a fantastic job um, cleaning everything out and um, making sure everything was ready to rock and roll um, in that aspect. Uh, and actually, everything was super clean. So, um, I'm going to take all these caps off and then we'll start um, getting bearings put into the block. One of the questions um, that I've seen asked uh, numerous times is uh, what lubricant do you put down 
on the block surface or on the main cap surface, right? Like what lubricant do you use for your bearings? And then, oh, do I put, do I put oil here or here? And the answer to that question is no, absolutely not. Do not do that. <laughs> don't put, <laughs> don't put oil on this surface or this surface, or even when you're doing your rod bearings on um, the steel surface, right? Because what you're you're trying to keep the the surfaces that move lubricated, these should not move. If these are moving, if your bearings are moving in here, you're spinning a bearing, and that's bad. Putting lubricant behind it is just a way to help that bearing be able to move. So don't put lubricant down in there. So let me get my all my rod caps off here. Rod caps. Let me get all of my main caps off here. I'm going to set these over here on the table. Even though they're numbered, I still like to set them in order. There we go. There you have it. Man, this thing looks great. For grins and giggles, we're gonna take, take a rag. And I'm gonna wipe the inside of this real quick, just for grins and giggles again. Um, when you get your block back from the machine shop, you'll probably wanna wash the whole thing, soap and water. I mean, just get all of the dirt, debris, grit, possibilities um, out of it so but I also as we build everything that I build into next gets cleaned again everything that I build into next gets cleaned again right so like right before I do pistons I'll clean the cylinder and we'll go from there so now what we need main bearing all right so something you'll notice here you get your main bearings and one is going to have one half of a set of bearings is going to have a hole in it and a nice little probably a nice little oil groove uh, but definitely going to have that hole in it and then if you look down on the block you'll see that there's holes in the bottom portion of the block the top the caps don't have that, right? So it make no sense to put this bearing on this cap, right? So what we're gonna do, even the this one has a hole, right? And then I'll show you a, so that's the top to that one. See, no hole, okay? So what we're gonna do and this is the first time I've used this stuff, um, but we're going to use the Clevite uh, bearing lube. <laughs> I usually just use the black assembly lube, which works great, but make sure you get yourself a good assembly lube. Um, there's a bazillion brands out there. That's, probably, that's an overstatement, but there's a bunch of different brands out there. That make good stuff. Um, I think. I think when you choose your um, your assembly lube, things you should keep in mind are like, okay, am I going to be storing this motor for a long time? Is it going to be sitting on the shelf, or is it going right into the car? Right. Uh, for anything that's going to be getting stored, you're going to want something that's going to stay in place for a very long period of time. And also for any like really high power, um, power builds and stuff, the thicker, it feels like the thicker the assembly lube, the better, right? Cause what this is going to do is protect, um, 
protect your crank and your cam and all that stuff. It's going to protect uh, everything until oil actually gets flowing um, and up to temperature because it's got to flow and it's got to get up to temperature before it actually gives you any real protection. Um, so it's going to protect all of your bearings and all of that stuff until your oil is up to temperature and is flowing properly um, during your break-in process. So make sure you're, you're doing that. Now, I like to make sure that my fingers are good and clean before I start getting crazy, but going to put some lube on. And then use my finger to make sure it's on there nice and nice and thick. Man, I paid my taxes. I should use more. There we go. There you go. And then we'll go ahead and shove that bad boy in there. Line up the, the time and shove it down in. And there you go, that's uh, bearing number one. So uh, that exact same thing, um, all the way down till we're done putting the bottom bearings in. Other way you can do it, of course, is just put it in, put your bearing in, and then lube after. Make sure you line up when the holes are offset, and this goes for any motor, make sure you line the holes up, your oil holes. This, is, this one's offset should line up because of the tangs anyways but you know I don't know if they're all directly bottom center on a uh, on other motors so mostly do small block 350s so there we go in place and we'll throw some more lube down This one, make sure, make sure you get lubricant on the face here and on these thrust surfaces. You're going to want lubrication on these thrust surfaces as well. So make sure those are coated. That's both sides. All right. All righty. Now we're going to take our freshly cleaned crank and drop her in here. Nice and easy like. Try to keep it lined up. Get her in. Square. Here we go. Had it had the front going in just a little bit. Um, faster than the back so I had to line it back up to get the back end to drop in there you have it now I've already, I've already put the bearings on the caps now I just got to lube the caps and put them all in their places I'm an idiot. So, you know how when you do something stupid, you uh, post it on YouTube, uh, and then you get crucified by YouTubers? Yeah, that just happened. 
If you were paying attention and you know what you're doing in engine building, um, you noticed that I messed up big time. I'll give you 30 seconds to figure it out. Okay, less than 30 seconds. I forgot to install my main seal. That's right. I shoved that crank on there and I completely forgot. I was more worried about uh, doing the video than I was about what I was actually doing. Um, so I messed up. Uh, this is a two piece rear main seal, um, came in the kit. So you're gonna put your one seal in this side of the cap and then you gotta put the other one in there, right there, <laughs> before, before you put your crank in. So, um, if you're wondering kind of how that goes, um, we can take a look at the seal here. Okay, take a nice good close up look. Um, this side, how it's kind of angled in right there. Yeah, um, let me see if I can set you guys right here and we can talk this through. Okay, so um, this guy right here, you'll see that there's kind of a, maybe you'll see it right there, okay? This part right here is a little bit larger, kind of more pronounced than this other side here, okay? Um, usually, uh, rule of thumb is the side there the side with the spring there is no spring on this one uh, the side with the spring goes towards the oil so the idea here is that the oil would be in here and it would get scraped off off the shaft to stay inside the motor if there's any back and forth movement inside there so um, if you're looking for direction of placement um, that side that looks all scrapey <laughs> all scrapey this bigger side here again that's usually the side with the spring and any other weird seal um, that's to keep the oil inside the engine so that faces the inside of the engine um, this side's just to keep dirt out right and you'll see that this is nice and tapered right here Whoosh. going down that direction going down that direction on this side so like if, if oil were to hit that, it'd push right past it, right? So this is a nice little stop on this side. So I'm making dumb mistakes. My, I don't know if it's because I'm more worried about doing the video or because um, it's late, but is what it is. I'm glad I caught it. I hadn't torqued anything down. I literally just put the, set the last cap on there and went, oh, uh, this cap is missing something. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. That's why I usually don't do a how-to, like, um, cause I'm not really great at how-to videos. I show you how I do it. And when I mess up, I hope you learn from my mistakes and you don't do them yourselves. So, um, try not to crucify me too much because I did mess that up. It is what it is. Um, I'm gonna pull this crank out real quick, get this seal installed, and then go right back to where I was, um, and then I'll be able to start uh, torquing these bolts down. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> One more thing on these seals, I never like to install them dry, so I'm gonna get a little bit of uh, engine oil um, once I get them installed in place, and I'll put a little bit around the seal lip here. Um, I guess you could do that with your assembly lube or whatever, but I like to use on seals like this, I like to use engine oil. So um, don't forget to do that. All right, I guess one of the other little things I forgot to uh, show you is the, um, right here on this two piece remain seal, I'm gonna take a little bit of RTV. I'm gonna put some right here, okay? Um, I got I dipped my finger in some oil and I got a little bit of oil on the crank so I mean that should keep that from sticking uh, some guys like to put a little bit of grease up there just to make sure the RTV doesn't stick to it so uh, when it dries it doesn't like tear up the seal and stuff but the goal is just to get the RTV right in this spot right here 
um, not getting crazy or anything um, just to help it seal uh, and I think that's dependent on the seals that you get right some seals need it some seals don't uh, according to my destructions my seals need it so uh, I think I don't know I think almost every seal I've ever used um, I've done that so yeah I uh, just wanted to point that out uh, before I put the the actual cap back on you can actually come to this side to the cap side and put some right here and right here and then set it on rather than trying to do it over there next to the crank so another thing to look for <laughs> man it's crazy all the little things you, you just forget I guess um, anyways now we're to the point where um, so I got my seals in, got my bearings in, everything's all looped up, um, and we are to the point where we're going to tighten the main caps down. So, um, let me get your 5 eight. and I like to just run everything in by hand until it touches, and you usually start in the center and go outwards. but. just till it touches I'm not putting any torque on these yet to bust out the torque wrench all right so uh, to the point where we're gonna torque this down um, the torque for the main cap bolts uh, I think with stock bolts it's 70 70 foot-pounds um, but you always want to torque it in stages so um, the, I think you can do it in two stages. I always do it in three stages. So first round of torque that I'm going to do is at 30 pounds. And then I will go up to either like 55 or 60. Um, and then I will do my final torque at 70. So I um, already got my torque wrench set at 30 pounds. Um, and I kind of said it earlier, but I always torque these from the center out um, that way it kind of it, it seats the the crank just a little bit better so uh, let's have let's have at it and just as a, a note it's the closer you are to the head of the bolt that you're torquing the better Really, I should be using a small um, 5 eighths, a short 5 eighths um, socket. Uh, anything that you extend up, upwards, so like using extensions and things like that, um, some of those extensions and stuff take up some of your torque. So um, the closer you are to the head of your bolt, the more, ex more accurate of a torque you're gonna get. Go till the click. I usually, I usually do the the long uh, or deep socket just to get away from my work a little bit, but I understand that it's more accurate with a shorter one. Yeah, I already did that. <laughs> Let's go up to uh, 55 pounds. It's 30.
55. Torque again. Awesome. Now we'll go to our last setting of 70. If you're gonna build engines, go get yourself a good torque wrench. This is a Craftsman. It's not the most expensive one on the market. It's not the cheapest one on the market. Um, I don't know if I would trust like a Harbor Freight brand or something to engine building, but go get yourself a good torque wrench. Doesn't have to be fancy schmancy and digital and all that jazz. It just has to be good and accurate. So, all right, our crankshaft is in. Make sure you zero your torque wrench out. It's going to be sitting for a minute. Boom. Gonna leave that out. So now our crank is in. We can give it a nice little easy spin. She spins great. It's fantastic. I'm getting excited. Hi guys, we got our crankshaft in. Um, that makes me happy for tonight. Uh, we'll call it quits there. Um, man, I can't believe, I can't believe the mistakes I made, but um, you know, I've never built one with the distraction of trying to make a video and, and all that stuff either. The important thing is, is that you catch those things. And so like right now um, is a good time to go, okay, did I do this right? I, I got the crank in, I put all the, Put all the main bearings in they all have lubricant fantastic put the mains the the rear main seal on after i missed it but got the rear main seal on and all of this is torqued so this is a good stopping point um especially if you're going to take a you know um like i'm going to do i'm going to go take a sleepy sleep um because it's the end of the night and come back and hit it again tomorrow so uh, good stopping stopping point make sure everything's torqued um, you either leave everything torqued or you leave everything not torqued like it's not um, I'm just in my opinion I like to leave them all in the same state not like oh well I torqued half it and then forgot to torque the other half um, yeah and then you forget it when you go to put the dang thing together 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 wow later on it's late <laughs> so all right, we're gonna stop here. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Any questions, comments, concerns down below. Uh, I know there's probably gonna be lots of comments about uh, uh, my little my little mistakey stake I made, but that's all right. Um, I'm not the type of guy that's gonna edit that stuff out. So um, that's why I, I try to say it's not really a how-to, it's just kind of this is how I do it and things to look out for when I, as I'm going through it. So, <sighs> thanks for watching guys, I really do appreciate it. Don't forget to check out the Lumsden Motorsports Facebook page. Um, we're really gonna start hitting this hard. I'm gonna do another video um, tomorrow where we start installing pistons and stuff, so. Um, We'll show you the whole thing all the way to complete and we'll get it put into the modified and hopefully get to go race the uh, The next race is in three weeks two weeks Three weeks I race in three weeks. So three weeks from actually yesterday. So um, Got to get this thing done. Got to get it in got to get it uh, tuned up broken all of that happy stuff So starting to run out of time but hopefully gonna make a whole lot of headway. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a big black trash bag um, and cover all this up to keep any dust, dirt, debris out of it while it's sitting overnight. And we're gonna call it good. So thanks for watching guys, we'll see you next video.
Man, I feel like I'm doing a lot of these afterthought videos. Um, okay, so <clears throat> in installing this rear piece main seal, um, I, uh, I I did think about uh, the way other people install it, and I'm pretty sure there might be a lot of comments down below on how they install a two-piece rear main seal. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so remember how when I shove, first off, they do it right the first time. Uh, secondly, um, <laughs> they uh, when they put their two-piece uh, rear main in, they put that bottom one in down in the, in the block. Um, sometimes they'll shove it down just a little bit farther like that uh, uh, on one side, uh, which will make it, you know, which would make it pop up on this side, right? And then on the other cap, you would rotate it to match. Uh, that way, the where the two seal ends meet isn't where the seam of where the cap and the block meet as well. So it would be like up here and like down here-ish um, where they meet. So um, that's something guys do. Um, honestly, I don't know if I've ever actually done that on purpose. Um, and I don't think I've ever had an issue. Um, other deal is um, when I put the RTV on, I just put it around the seal. Um, if you look down in here real close, um, I used very, very small amounts. And you can see just a very little bit of silicone popping out right there. Um, I have that. I have that on both sides. So, uh, but what some guys will do is they will art a very thin layer because you're talking about machine surfaces, right? And it'll, it squeezes, squeezes through and spreads uh, like crazy. But they would do a thin layer um, all the way out or even all the way out and down over to like here, um, trying to create a bar barrier to keep any oil from escaping out that way. Um, I tend to just do what I showed you guys, that, that little bit, and it seems to work. Now when I go to put my oil pan on, um, I do put uh, more silicone down in here, which is kind of where that little gap is. So I have silicone underneath the cap here and then I make another little layer from there to the edge of the block um, to seal. So um, again, this is just how I do it. Uh, I, I haven't had any issues doing it this way. Um, I just want, I guess again, to let you guys know that I know there's other ways of doing it. I'm pretty sure that if a guy um, did twist that seal, um, that's probably that's probably a good idea. Um, also, on the back side of the seal, the groove that it sets on, on the block and on your cap, um, some guys will get down into that groove and put a thin layer of silicone on the back side of that, um, that seal so that it, it holds and seals to the cap and the block itself. Um, so that's those are all options of things that you can do um, not something I've ever done uh, at least not something I think I've ever done I probably have tried it before um, it's usually just depends on the mood I'm in when I'm building I guess but um, typical standard what I showed you is what I normally do and I normally don't have any issues so um, that doesn't mean to say that I might not have issues and that there's not a better way to do it so um, just keep that stuff in mind again I am kind of doing this as a as a um, how-to video but it's not really a how-to this is more of a just me assembling and and talking through what I'm doing and um, if you guys are using this to build your small block 350 you know do your do your research there's a lot of really good DIY videos out there on building small block 350s um, or 383s or whatever um, again this is more my channel's more vlog than it is uh, how to I just wanted to share with you guys so throwing that out there um, <laughs> we'll talk to you later guys